As always, we're going to get started with our <clears throat> news you can use in honor of uh, April Fool's Day tomorrow. I actually has a graphic that we're going to come up for you on news you can use. This is a reminder that news uh, you can use, at news you can use, we do precision guesswork based on unreliable data provided by those of questionable knowledge. Uh, just a little funny to get you guys smile and crack up. I'm sure Michelle Roberts in Ecuador is laughing right now. Anyway, we're going to get uh, fired up right now with news you can use. And today we're going to talk about the seven signs that there will be a housing market crash. I'm going to go through the signs and then uh, we're going to ask everybody to guess how many of these signs are evident today, in today's market. All right, these are the, and these are historically the seven signs. Now, these are not necessarily, um, uh, you, and you can go ahead and put it on screen, actually. Um, these aren't necessarily uh, what we're going to see this go around. However, uh, for the last four crashes, these have been the signs that have preceded uh, the crash. Number one, <clears throat> after an extended period of price acceleration, home prices are plateauing or flattening off. Number two, there are numerous risky mortgage products available. Uh, we saw a lot of this in 2008. These would be things like uh, no money down, very low money down, interest only mortgages, adjustable rate mortgages that reset after a three or five year period, those kind of things. Number three, interest rates are rising. Number four, housing stock surplus, a surplus of housing stock is one that is basically six months or above six months of supply. Uh, that's considered a healthy or a balanced marketplace. Um, anything less than that is, um, is not considered excess unless some of these other factors come into play. But right now that's the metric we're looking at, six months worth of supply. Uh, next one, buyers are cautious. Um, <clears throat> that's one of the strange things about uh, an economic or a housing crash is it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. In other words, if the buyers out there think uh, that they have to be cautious for whatever reason, whether it's real, imaginary, or whatever, um, they can actually make that happen uh, by their actions. Now, the next one, increase in foreclosures. Are there more foreclosures going on? And the last uh, is that the U.S. economy is weak. All right, so those are the seven items. Let me go through them one more time. I'm gonna ask everybody to jump on the uh, chat box and put in uh, from one to seven, how many of those are present in today's uh, housing market? Number number one, after an extended period of acceleration, home price, prices are plateauing or dropping. Number two, numerous risky mortgage products are available. Number three, interest rates are rising. Number four, housing stocks uh, are in a surplus position. In other words, there are more than six months of supply. Number five, buyers are cautious. Number six, increase in foreclosures or the increase in the foreclosure rate. And number seven, the U.S. economy is weak. Every market crash in the housing market has been preceded by all seven of these signs. So if we were to follow that logic, all seven of those must happen before we see. So everybody hop in the chat. I'd like to get everybody's guess. One to seven, how many of those things are we seeing out there right now? What do you think, Ashley? Ooh, I'd say at least five. Okay. Uh, Brandy is saying six. <clears throat> Michelle Roberts, five. Corey's got five. I'm going to give you my guess at the end. Sam, seven. Elena, three. Any other guesses? Ish has got six. Any others? Last call. Yesenia, I hope I'm saying that right, is guessing four. Glenn is got five and joe's got five all right here's what i'm seeing i've gone through and looked at these things i think all seven of them are present right now 
the only thing that would be iffy would be is there a six month worth of supply of houses but definitely the other six are all present today um and i believe that we've got more than a a normal amount of inventory because this has to count or take into account all of the shadow inventory as well so <clears throat> there's inventory is being held by banks that's been foreclosed there's inventory that is in forbearance programs that are in abeyance uh, those types of things. The minute those banks uh, decide to give up on the foreclosure process or basically uh, expedite that foreclosure or the forbearance thing. Remember, we had a bunch of these as a result of COVID and the banks kind of sat on their hands and then the, the various state governments and the federal government kicked that can down the road. Well, we're down that road now. Um, and when you look at a six month supply you know, you think of it in terms of historically how many houses would sell in a six month period, but the houses, the number of houses that are selling now are small because the inventory tends to be smaller. So when you look at that versus the demand for product, and in other words, the demand from buyers of houses to have buyers to buy, um, I think we're at like a seven, eight or nine month supply of houses as a practical number. Now, the way they traditionally measure it uh, it may not be the case, but I think from an effective, uh, practical standpoint, and I'm going to go through this on Tuesday. I'm going to talk to you guys about uh, exactly why I think all seven of these, and I'm going to lay out some specific things, but I think that we are in a position now uh, of an imminent housing crash sometime probably within the next, it's starting here in the next 12 months, potentially by the end of this year. Uh, but certainly by the end of 2023. That's my guess. Um, like I said, it's based on the information that we've got available out there, what I've seen based on the fact I've been through about four crashes so far. <clears throat> and they're, uh, they're a great opportunity in this well, kind of a PSA type thing here. Keep in mind that those of you who practice transactional engineering stand to benefit from that type of market. So when the market goes down, the availability uh, and the supply of product for you to buy and then turn into a seller financed type transaction or something like a lease option uh, greatly increases. Brandy talked about that on, on Wednesday's call, yesterday's call, that she's seeing more and more of that now. We're getting a lot, uh, a lot more buyers out there who can't find products. So the buyer pool is building up, either can't or they can't afford it. Um, and it's, it's not that they can't afford it, they can't afford it using traditional means. So uh, we're there as transactional engineers to create that type of product that would allow these buyers to buy it. I think when you take into consideration the number of buyers and the, the number of sellers, the effective rate, I think we're hitting on all seven that we're gonna see some signals here of that. And if we're not, I think we certainly will be within probably the next six months, something like that. All right, that's our news you can use for today.